Hi, I'm Paris, and I desperately need some more storage space in my Inspiron 15 5000. Comes with a very speedy, very nice M2 drive with 256 gigabytes of storage. Filled it all up already. And part of the reason I picked this system, which I got last Black Friday, very good deal, $549, is that it is upgradable. In addition to that M2 drive, there's supposed to be space and a connector in here to connect a notebook hard drive. Epic review now I've got an old solid state drive. This is a Vertex 4 with 256 gigabytes of memory. It's the same size and dimensions about as about <laughs> as a laptop hard drive. So my goal is to double the storage space of my system by installing this. Shouldn't be too hard so long as the available space and the connector are in there. I'm going to be following the steps on Dell's service manual website. I'll also link down below to the service manual for this model, which takes you through kind of step-by-step step how to do this, but we're going to go through it together here. You'll see on video each of the steps that I take. However, if you're doing this, it is at your own risk. Be sure and read all the information, especially on the Dell service manual page about before you start this to make sure you're not going to have a static charge. It's probably one of the biggest concerns that you could get a little electric zap to one of the components inside and severely damage your computer. And here on the Dell website in the service manual, they tell you before even removing the cover, read through the safety instructions. Then they show you the screws that you'll need to remove. You pry it loose and lift it up. Then you have to go and disconnect the battery. And then they want you to turn the computer over, press the power button for 15 seconds in order to completely discharge the system board. And here's my laptop. Let's get started. With the screws removed, they say to use your fingernails to pry away the base from the rest of the computer. I was not able to do that, so I've opened it up. And I'm currently working. This is the corner you're supposed to start with to be able to push this back part away. And I can get just a little of it going there. And I can hear the plastic clicking, so I know if I can get it to go far enough, it'll unclick and then I can take it the rest of the way around. Job for the fingernails though, this is not. So I've brought over some more prying tools. Okay. As I said, more than fingernails are required. Okay, I think fingernails can take it from here. Voila. This is the battery. Takes up a big chunk of the laptop, doesn't it? The instructions say to peel off the tape that holds the cable to the battery. Then peel off the tape that secures the battery cable to the battery cable connector. Battery cable, battery cable connector. Seems to pull the cable right with it. Okay, cable is unplugged. So the battery is now unplugged from the system. At this point, they want me to turn the computer back over and open it up and press and hold the power button. So I'm gonna Put that in place so nothing touches things that it shouldn't. Flip it over. Open the display. And then press and hold the power button. Battery's disconnected, it will not come on. It better not come on. Pressing and holding for 15 seconds. 
This gets rid of any electricity that might have still been left in the system board. With that done, close the screen again, flip it back over, remove the base cover again. Let's see what we've got. All right, I've got my solid state drive, which connects with the standard serial ATA connectors. And this spot with the empty little plastic cover, that's where it's gonna go. Something I just noticed is that in the service manual, the instructions are a little bit different from what they've got posted on this plastic container. And I think the reason for that is that ordinarily, if you were removing a hard drive, there would have been a hard drive installed. Since this didn't ship with a hard drive, they didn't even bother to plug the cable into the motherboard. But let me start by removing the screws that hold this whole case in. So I'm removing one, two, three screws to start with. So the hard drive is going to fit in here either this way or this way. I think the screw holes will line up either way, but if this is connected like this, I've got to see what the cable situation looks like. So they have included four screws here. You take them out of this holding port and then put them into the sides to hold on this plastic cover. Finish tightening these up. Okay. This should now be good to go. Let's connect the cable next. That snaps on. All right. It says HDD. This has got to be the hard drive. And I wouldn't think it goes the other way. Ah, okay. Now I didn't realize that. Maybe I should have read the instructions more clearly. Turns out this little dealie pops up and down. So you open it by flipping the little black piece up, which exposes the contacts. Then put this, oh, don't go down yet. Put this all the way in. Ah, so those little plastic pieces that bumped out the side, they're now caught by two little plastic pieces in there. So at this point, I think I just snap it shut. Snap sound, good. Seems secure. Let me get screws into this. Well, it turns out there's a problem getting this solid state drive into this space. It fits this way, but it's too thick. My Vertex 4 drive is nine millimeters thick. Turns out, so is my OCZ drive. These will not fit in that hard drive space. Fortunately, I do have one drive that will fit. This is my Samsung 850 Pro, a 512 gigabyte capacity drive. So I'll just have some more extra space in this notebook. Now it turns out the drive you install has to be a seven millimeter drive in order to fit, not the slightly thicker nine millimeter drives like a lot are. With my other drives, I couldn't get these short little screws. There's three of them that need to go through here and attach onto the frame of the notebook. They would not reach because the drive was too thick. But with my seven millimeter Samsung drive, I have no problem. My Samsung drive is now installed in this plasticky case. That is attached to the frame right here. I've got the cable attaching to the hard drive and to the motherboard. Now I'm ready to hook the battery back up. That's reattaching this cable. Slid all the way in and put the tape back over it. Okay, there we go. Double checking, I've got the cable attached to the battery and the other end of that cable attached to the motherboard. Looks like everything is set here. I'm gonna put the base cover back on and it should mostly snap back into place. Gotta get all those last snaps in. Okay, looks good. Time to put screws back in. The three longer screws go in these closest to the hinge and the shorter screws go around here. All the screws are in, time to start it up and see if it detects that new drive. Well, it didn't go to the BIOS screen, but hopefully it found it. 
Yep, there it is, my 850 Pro with all the files that were still on the drive. So I've still got to get those cleaned up and archived, and then I can put this drive to full use. And so that's all there is to installing an extra drive into the Inspiron 15 5000. Find out more about this system and the drive that I installed at the links down below this video, and I'll see you on the next review. Shopping is easy when you know what to buy. At Epic Review, guys, a gift of a try. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows. But before he goes shopping, he watches our videos.